Hey everybody, Pixel here. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Soul Silver. In the last episode, we got ourselves an event Celebi and learned more about Silver's past, specifically that Giovanni, the former boss of Team Rocket, was his father. It was never directly stated, but it is directly stated in the aftergame of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. This time, there's another event legendary, and this episode may very well be less than 10 minutes, but I don't care. Here, I want to talk to this green guy. Good evening. I've received a gift for you. Here you go. Ashley received an Arceus. We look forward to your next visit. Arceus. This Pokemon is absurd. <laughs> You get this from a Toys R Us event that has been discontinued since 2009, and yeah, look at those stats. This guy is the god of all Pokemon, just in canon. That's just true to the game's world. Unfortunately, meaning Mew was kind of replaced. This specific Arceus has Roar of Time, Spatial Rend, and Shadow Force, which are the signature moves of Dialga, Palkia, and Garatina, respectively. Um, and that's really good. It also has Judgment, its signature type of move. You can find elemental plate items throughout the world. I'm not sure if that's in this game or just in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, but I think it's in these ones as well. When you find those plates, you can give them to Arceus and it will change its type as well as the type of Judgment. That's a really good ability. It also powers up whatever type... Uh, moves it gets, so Judgment is automatically powered up as well if you have any plate on it, and that includes the normal plate. Arceus is one of the most broken Pokemon in the game. It has never been legal in any competitive format, and there's good reason for that. So what reason do we have to use Arceus? I mean, I already went over how it's banned in all legal tournament formats, and like, there's no real reason to use Pokemon like Arceus outside of tournaments unless you just really want that vanity on your team, but... Arceus is used for an event, as I already stated earlier in the episode. And I already went over how I feel about uh, the Pokemon company and just Nintendo in general, using things as fragile as Nintendo Wi-Fi connection to uh, have events like this. Like, you're locking them behind something that's so fragile that can be destroyed at any time. Ruins of Elf. Feel free to explore the ruins and become a fossil professor. I don't care about that. Ouch! Are you okay? I was in a hurry and... Sorry, did I hurt you? No way. Could it be a Pokemon from Sinnoh? The one they call Arceus? Could it be Arceus causing all this? I cannot explain it any other way. Arceus may be the key to solving the mystery of the unknown and the ruins of Alf. Can you come to the ruins of Alf with me? Please, you must. I'm trembling with excitement. I think something is about to happen. Hmm. I've been studying the ruins for many years, but something feels different. The unknown pictures on the wall. Feels like they're staring at me. What is this? There's something eerie that's making my legs shiver. I can't stop them. Welcome. This place has similar music to Mount Coronet from Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl. You see this Delta symbol, which suggests maybe Rayquaza will appear here, but no. Let's head out into the Sinjo ruins. Well, hello. It's so freezing, isn't it? For a youngster like you to be interested in the Sinjo ruins is not something we see every day. Take a look at them. From the design of the pillars at the Sinjo Ruins, you can see that the cultures of Sinnoh and Johto have blended. What was I thinking? We don't need to be standing here. Why don't you come to the cabin around the corner for more discussion? 
you have an entire area locked behind a Wi-Fi event. Or a Toys R Us event. By the way, we happen to have a person at the cabin. Any trainer should know who she is. The famous trainer from Sinnoh. She's traveling around to study myths and ancient ruins. Isn't that something? It sure is. A long time ago, people used to draw life from Pokemon and also give their lives to those Pokemon. That shows that people in Pokemon used to be more closely bonded with each other. When people move from place to place, the myths and legends of Pokemon and their power would also be carried with those people. That's how myths and legends from each region are blended with each other. The ancient ruins have, here have inherited the legends from both the ruins of Alf and Johto and the Spear Pillar in Sinnoh. That is proof that people from Johto and Sinnoh blended together as a group. You seem out of place, not even knowing why you're here. Do you want to use my Abra to use a special power to take you home? Nope. Okay, okay. Best of luck to you. I want to get Arceus out of my party. Actually, no. I think it's only right that we keep it, because this is kind of an Arceus-centric event. This is who we're here to talk to. My name is Cynthia. I'm a Pokemon trainer. The Sinjo ruins remind me of Sinnoh, where I come from. Initially, I thought it was because it snows a lot here as well, but that was not it. A long time ago, people came from Sinnoh to live here. They must have built a temple here while longing for home. That's why we call these the Sinjo ruins. You're... a Pokemon trainer? I can sense strong power coming from your Pokeball. I feel a familiar presence. The power of Dialga, Palkia, or could it be Garatina? It's similar, but not quite the same. Have you got time? Can you come to the Sinjo Ruins with me? Call it a trainer's intuition. When you and your Pokémon step onto that stage, something will happen. Uh, nothing happened before, but... Alright. Let's head to the Sinjo Ruins again. This is the mystery stage. The mythical stage built to show respect for Arceus. It is said that people used to celebrate its magnificent might with music and dance. Some people in Johto still pass down this tradition. The mystery stage allows a single Arceus and nothing else to get on the stage. If you wish to go up there, you have to deposit your other Pokemon in the PC box of the cabin. Oh my god. Pass down. According to an ancient document, time, space, and antimatter, or what combined we call this world, shall be born when Arceus stands on the mystery stage. This is where one might say the lead enters the mystery stage at last. All my study of ruins and Pokemon mythology in Sinnoh may have been to bring you up on the stage here today. Depicted on the mystery stage are the Pokemon that shaped the world. The circle in the middle is Arceus, the origin of it all. This is the pattern that represents Palkia, the master of space and dimensions. This is the pattern that represents Dialga, the Guardian of Time. This is the pattern that represents Giratina, the ruler of the world that is on the opposite side of ours, the world of antimatter. Arceus has accepted you as a trainer. Arceus, having shaped the world, is said to show you a glimpse of its true power. The power of possibly making life appear out of nothing. It seems that something will happen when you choose one of the circles. You'll want to be well prepared. I thought about this for a little bit before recording. Pokemon Platinum has Giratina as its main mascot. That is the most canon of the Pokemon games. Pokemon Pearl has Palkia. And Pokemon Diamond has Dialga. And Pokemon Diamond was the first Pokemon game I ever beat on my own. So I'm going with Dialga. So you choose Dialga, the Guardian of Time? Yes.
The mysterious round object took the shape of a Pokemon. Nope. That shining sphere. Could it be an egg? Did we just witness the very moment an egg was brought into this world? A moment no one has ever seen? An egg is the cradle of every being. This planet itself is an egg in a sense. Life that comes from an egg will come to an end in due course, to begin anew. That may be what Arceus wanted to show us. That was... We seem to be surrounded by that strong power again. Oh, are you alright? You disappeared right in front of me. I was so surprised. I see. The power of Arceus and Unknown un affected each other to create a huge energy which sent you to the Sinjo ruins? Unknown, the ruins of Alf and Arceus. The mystery deepens. It has made me even more inquisitive. I will one day solve all the mysteries. And that's it. Dialga is holding the Adamant Orb. This increases the power of steel and dragon-type moves when used by Dialga. You may think I'm going to go over Dialga's bio right now, but no, I'm not. We will be back later, though. There's no legitimate way to go back to the Sinjo Ruins anymore. If you had an Arceus from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum that came from the Spear Pillar and specifically the... Hall of Origin, which is a event that was never released outside of Japan. I don't think it was even released in Japan, in fact. There's a second event. You can go back to the Sinjo Ruins and get another Pokemon. Well, it's clear by the fact that I have this Arceus that I'm not above cheating to get these events, so... Yeah. You can see that this event is indeed just repeating. It's the exact same event. Um, that's because this is not the Spear Pillar Arceus. This is the exact same Arceus using a code that reactivates the event. I really just don't want to go through the hassle of getting a Spear Pillar Arceus through Pokegen or through another action replay code or anything. And this just happened to be on the same thing overall so i'm gonna go through it once more as if i did have a second arceus from the spear pillar and for all i know maybe the flags have been reset here nope this guy's just gonna come right back okay oh hello. yeah all right nothing appears to be different since i've just started over the event as a whole so yeah, this is just going to be me getting the Pokemon again. I'm not going to show the cutscene again or anything, just know I'm going to be repeating this two times in order to get all three of the Pokemon. I'm not going to consider this cheating because this is an emulator, I'll never be able to use them for anything anyway. And of course I'll go over the bios once I'm done. Feel the wrath of a god, bitch! Ah, feel the wrath of an actual fucking god. How does that feel, you unknown motherfucker, you disappointment of a fucking legendary Pokemon? Oh, with this shit again. Why do you keep coming here? I told you I don't want to buy your fucking insurance. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Of course you're going to use a god to threaten me into purchasing it anyway. Uh... Now that we're back to Azalea Town with three legendary Pokemon, I think it's finally time to go over them. Starting off with Dialga. Dialga is an extremely powerful special attacker with high defense, attack, speed, special defense, and HP to go with it. It does not have a single stat below 90, and its only stat that's below 100 is its speed, which is 90. With a base total of 680, it's definitely one of the better base totals in the entire game. Maybe after Mewtwo, Rayquaza, a few other Pokemon, obviously, whatever. Dialga is a Steel Dragon type, which is an exceptional defensive type. I, I mean, it resists Fire, which is 
the most major weakness Steel has. Obviously, it still has that weakness to uh, ground-type moves, but there's not much you can really do about that. It's just kind of a fact of life when it comes to Steel-types that they will most of the time be affected very strongly by ground-type moves. If you plan on using Dialga, its signature move, Roar of Time, is essentially a Dragon-type Hyper Beam. It's extremely powerful, but it has to recharge after use and it only has 5 PP. It's very good. It's not really outclassed by anything else. It's in a class of its own, honestly. So, yeah, if you're looking for a dragon type, you happen to be able to get this event, and you want a Pokemon like Tialga, then by all means, it's not in any way a bad choice. Next up, we have Palkia, not Garatina, sorry. Palkia. This is one I know significantly less about. However, it looks to have very similar stats to Dialga. Instead of having a... Wow. Okay, I guess the only difference really is speed and HP are switched, because uh, it only has 90 HP but 100 speed. I'd assume because of that 150 in special attack, it's a special sweeper. But that's all I can really tell you about Palkia. I really know nothing about it. If you do want to know more about Palkia, uh, I'll leave a link in the description to the video in Chuggy Conroy's Pokemon Platinum Let's Play where he catches it because he goes into significant detail in all of his bios. Lastly, Giratina. This one is a little weird. It has 150 in HP, making it one of the better HP tanks in the game, but HP is the only thing it excels at. The same with how Dialga and Palkia both excel in special attack, Garatina excels in HP. It's a little weird. I can't really say I'm a fan. However, when you give Giratina a certain item, one that it came with in fact, an item called the Grissius Orb, it will change into its origin form. Giratina origin form is essentially the same. However, it does have increased attacking stats, meaning it can do much more damage overall. It gets 20 extra in both stats. Uh, Giratina's signature move is Shadow Force. It essentially is a ghost-type fly with a significantly higher amount of damage. And, yeah. Giratina's Grissius form also gives it the ability of Levitate instead of Pressure, meaning it won't be affected by ground-type moves. Not the best ability it could have gotten, but I honestly prefer it to pressure overall. It's very good in double battles with Pokemon that have Earthquake. But yeah, that's the Sinnoh Trio, and that's other than Moltres. Stupid fucking Moltres. <laughs> Every legendary Pokemon that is obtainable through Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Well, that's not completely true, but... Believe it or not, after Mount Silver, there is still one thing we have to do. And it's not something I'm looking forward to, but we do have to do it. Next time, though, on Pokemon Soul Silver, we will be heading off to Mount Silver to face our final challenge. Our final challenge in terms of what should be the final challenge, but there's a ton of stuff required before and all that, whatever. I don't care. See you guys then. Mm -hmm.